So thanks to be here again, um, where the BPM is, is the core of the discussions. Uh, today we're going to talk about the place of robots, roles they can play in business scenarios. Uh, I'm Francois Bonnet, uh, I'm product marketing manager in a French company specialized in business process management as well as document and information capture and recognition. Um, if we look through our prism, uh, we see a change of paradigm uh, from the batch processing to on-the-fly processing. Uh, and this is a strong requirement of digital transformation to propose new class of services. Uh, in parallel, new kind of interactions appear on the market. Uh, computer, internet, self-service machines, smartphone, tablets, connected objects, smart TV, chatbots. These are the new devices that drive the new type of interactions. Uh, among these devices, uh, robots are today in our life, not only for science fiction, um, industry 2.0, even 4.0, uh, and more chatbots, even farming like Nathaniel talked about, uh, about it two years ago. And if, with the crazy speed of business, uh, the number of commercial offers become combinatorial. Um, think about the telco industry that has moved from wired to 4G, from basic mobile to smartphones. Therefore, the number of plans of mobile phones has increased dramatically, and you must deal with so many available commercial offers that a human can't do without any automation. And this is where the technology can help and assist day-to-day -day tasks. Augmented agents have access immediately to all information about the customer, uh, in this case, the device, the plan, the insurance, the payments. And this is where I want to take you today, about customer-facing scenarios. This is a matter of links between front and back office systems based on business processes. In other words, adding new interaction channels for a better customer experience. This is the purpose of digital business platforms, whatever they are called. This is a collection of different technology, individually strong. The challenge is to align them together. In this context, RPA is a real complement to BPM. Today, with our partnership with Contextor, uh, we can propose a 100% end-to-end process automation for on-demand processing. And Jim said, process is the secret source of digital transformation, did you? Uh, moreover, I would say that BPMN can make it as such. We have shown that it was possible in the past to drive IoT to assist elderly people at home. And today, I will show the interaction with a real robot. We combine hardware with, so with our software for a better business-oriented service that can be proposed compared to, to the only capacities of a robot by itself. Uh, we will go in a phone shop for the scenario of the demo where the first contact point is a robot. He will assist the customer in his journey according to several parameters. I will be the customer that enters the phone shop. Based on the robot's memory of me, we will have different interactions that will be driven accordingly, and the subsequent action will trigger the right business process. During the journey in the shop, I will be tracked, identified, and a custom, and a custom set of options will be proposed to me. Depending on my choice, I may be prompted for extra information, such an ID card. So, what's in it for me? That addresses important issues such as KYC, document confidence, in an environment where we talked about GDPR and case management are key for the customer's interactions. We realize that digital transformation drives innovation to new level of services where stakeholders have time and tools to propose high quality interactions with their customers. And to achieve that, even if BPM is not new, it's been moving through the different generations for what we used to call workflow management to actual uh, digital process automation or the latest, latest digital ops. And BPM has a bright future, embracing the new challenges of technology, trends, as well as the new interaction capacities for digital class services. So now, this is the moment I'm waiting and working on for a while. 
So I will unveil what we have there. And I'm very happy to introduce you SCAPA, which is our robot. And um, so SCAPA has capacities, is able to move. Uh, we will see that in a second. Uh, and it provides what it sees uh, within this screen there, where we have different, uh, different capacities. So if we start, so just continue with my papers. Sorry for that. <laughs> There is so many things we have to talk about today that I would not like to miss one. Um, so the, uh, the, the first key point of it is there is a voice to speech or text to speech capacity that is implemented. So uh, I could type in with a voice test here. So I have several buttons. Say hello world, for instance. And we hello should have world. Some, we should have some coming up. We will make it higher. Uh, and the sound is backed up by um, uh, a dialogue flow. So I programmed a few things. For instance, uh, what I have to trigger the mic. So I have some issues with uh, taking the, uh, the sound. So uh, I may have to repeat the sentence there. But if I pick on here, on this button here, and say, what is your favorite color? Blue, no, red. Okay. Or in the same way, what is your quest? The seek of the Holy Grail. Okay, you may have guessed where it comes from. Um, <laughs> so this is the, uh, the first part. So uh, we, we back up the voice system with dialogue flow. And the dialogue flow here interface is there. And you can add as many sentences as you want. But the sentences can be there with actions. Uh, so I could add another one and show that directly it it goes with the, uh, with the robot. So I create a new intent. So the intent is, uh, what is the world of the day? Did I say world or word? And um, let's imagine something. For instance, looks like the server is not available. Let's try. May the force be with you. OK, I save that. OK, the intent has been saved. And if I come back to my robot and say something, word of the day. May the force be with you. OK, so we are on. We can move forward. <laughs> um, so this is for the voice, the voice part. So you know, Sorry, could you say that again? OK, hold on. So I, I mute the mic. <laughs> um, so the other thing I can do is to uh, track the uh, um, automatically, so is able to see that someone is coming in. You see, and there is a square on the screen. And if I move not too fast, then you see the eyes are moving. Come on, don't be shy. That's the first time that so many people are here. So that's the reason why. Okay, turn the head around me. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. So you see, he's moving the head. <laughs> OK, so this is the second capacity we have there beyond the, beyond the, the text-to-speech and speech-to-text. There's a capacity of following and recognizing the faces there. And uh, of course, I can use the, the possibility I have a kind of joystick there, always wondering how it, it works. OK, so this is what I do with my fingers, moving the robot by itself. So this is basic set of capacities we have. Um, is alive, you see, <laughs> still moving around. So uh, vo um, voice management, face recognition management, and we haven't seen yet exactly how it works. And uh, of course, uh, the possibility to have interaction with the system, because we are here to talk about BPM. I haven't talked yet about it, but let's go. This is where I'm coming on. So um, just to see if he's still uh, around, uh, what the speed of a swallow? African or European swallow. OK. <laughs> so st still on track, so that's fine. That's One more time. <laughs> OK, so uh, I will ask a, a question next uh, is, uh, there is a face recognition capabilities that has been integrated. I told you that IT soft business for a, a long time has been the document recognition to know if it is a form, a check, an invoice. Uh, um, 
uh, an income declaration or this kind of document. So we're able to recognize the document by itself and to extract the content accordingly. So we are moving in this direction and uh, adding some new algorithms. So we, we took some uh, existing algorithm to have face recognition. And so at that moment, um, uh, we, could, we could trigger processes with a voice recognition and then it will go into a face recognition. So I have another sentence, which is, um, which is what? Is there anyone? So begin. Is there anyone? You. And you see that the. Tr the Hi, I'm Scapa. Do you want to see my show? So hold on a second. So you see that I gave him an order, and then the voice has been recognized as a key sentence, and the sentence with the dialogue flow uh, triggers the relevant business process with there, and the robot is driven by the business process that is executed. So now if I say yes, then that will trigger, okay, we'll pick the button there. <laughs> Step up in the club, come on, let's go. She wants to come, she wants to go. And if you want to fight, it's not a show. Cause I want you to be mine. Step up in the club, come on, let's go. And I want you to come, I won't let you go. But, yeah. Okay, thank you. It was so cool. It was so cool. What do you want me to do? <laughs> so, and um, so I have the possibilities to get some other actions there, uh, interactions. So, for instance, who is your creator? Who is your creator? And My birth name is InMove. I'm the first open source 3D printed life size robot I've been created by Gail Langevin, a French sculptor and designer. InMove is his personal project. All software part has been created by Salim Ben Senusai, technical manager at ITSOFT, and will be released as open source project. So we also we're also doing open source. Okay. What you want me to do? Okay, so this is a looping process that goes there and you can have different actions accordingly. You've understood that. So the robot itself has been printed uh, from a, an open source project. You may have, have heard it. Um, and uh, so that's quite interesting that there are things that may happen here uh, that you can build and on top of that build up uh, business solutions on top of it. So the next is I could ask to change my phone. So he's tracking a face there now that he may know. I hope you will recognize me. Hello, Francois Bonnet. Here we go. It's been a long time. You have exceeded the limit of your plan this month. You can check our new offer for economy. So we'll take some new pictures of me. Okay. Did you get some? And the process has moved. Not yet. Yeah, he's still taking pictures. Come on. That's the demo effect, you know. You should say, you're great. What can I help you with? Okay. <laughs> it's always the moment, moment of truth that comes in. So he asked me, what do I want? So depending on, you heard that he told me uh, you have over, your, your plan is overdue or somehow. I'm going over the, the plan, so he recognized me that I was a customer, and I, he, he connected to the relevant system to understand where are the different, what, what is my record track, my track record about the consumption I have with my phone, or if my phone is old or whatever, so you have different scenarios that may implement there, and depending on that, I have a few questions that are asked to me, and I'm still sticking there, so now if I say I want, want to change my phone, which kind of phone you like? Mm, iPhone? iPhone. 
Maybe because of my French accent, I don't know. <laughs> I told you, iPhone, come on. iPhone. <laughs> OK, pick on the button. Okay. I also prefer iPhone. Here is our pack for this phone. OK, so you can choose with different packs. Let's start again. When you want to speak into the mic, it works. I mean, you don't want it, doesn't. Large. Large. OK, hopefully we have buttons there. So uh, we, we select the plan. I think is, are you waiting for me again? Do you? Don't be shy. Yeah, I was trying to take some pictures and then classify again. I have to be on the right. Come on. I don't think so. Okay. To process your order, we need to check your ID card. So what happened at the moment there, uh, it was waiting, and you see there is a, a classifier each time. We have an action there, then we have a classification that goes. So he has to take some pictures, I have to be in front, he has to recognize that the face is in front of it to make sure that he gets the point. And while I'm discussing with the robot, the knowledge he has about myself is better and better. So uh, depending on the lightning conditions on these kind of things, he will be able to uh, sort out by the different users. So now we are in a kind of, uh, a, I would say, a KYC uh, situation where we have to make an action, but the robot has to make sure I'm myself. Um, and uh, we didn't implement, because we have an issue with the camera uh, resolution there, uh, we'd like to be able to take a picture of the camera, of, the, uh, of your ID or passport or whatever, uh, to make sure it is able to recognize that. But if you realize that when you are at the airport and you have to propose your, your passport, you have to put it onto the scanner directly. So uh, that's something a little tough, but we may have another better camera for the, for the next time. So I just do the simulation of that I could have the document. So I pick there the document. The document will be captured. So we we'll go through. OK, I got it. Thank you for waiting while I read your document. So this is the original picture. And then Thank we you for your order. The picture on the you will receive position. your iPhone with large plan as soon as possible. Thank you. What can I help you with? Bye bye. Or no, nothing. Thank you. Should finish. Thank you for your visit. We look forward to seeing you again. What do you want me to do? <laughs> bye bye. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, so what, what, what happened at the very end? So we see the original picture as you would have taken it with your uh, smartphone or this kind of things. And it has been realigned, ready to be sent to uh, our document recognition system. Um, but it was quite an infrastructure to put there, so I wanted to stop here. So at this stage, we've already seen uh, ma many things in it. Uh, but the last thing is about the face recognition. So I need to have uh, someone who, um, Bruce maybe, if you want to come in, I want a volunteer <laughs> to make sure that we are able to, uh, to see the face recognition. And uh, Bruce is not in my system yet, so at the very beginning, you should not be able to uh, to, to enter, so I should say, go for the face recognition. Start tracking face. <laughs> Are you Francois Bonnet? Please confirm your identity. No, he's not Francois Bonnet because he has few. What is your first name? He has few uh, elements in the database, so the comparison is quite quite easy to do. So Bruce, I can type it for you if you want. Enter. Entrée, yes, that's the one. What a beautiful name. Oh. I would also need your last name. OK, I type the silver for you here. And now you have OK, to Bruce Silver, them. thank you for choosing our shop. And he's trying to get your Can face. you put yourself in front of me? I'll save some pictures of you to remember you. You're great. Now I'm going to learn to recognize you that can take a few minutes. Okay, so that launches. Thank you for your participation.
Would you like to stop the process? Otherwise, it will reboot up. <laughs> it's too talkative, so st stay there for, for a minute. So um, at the moment now, you see that there are faces classification, so he's able to know where, whether, so we, we made it very loose for the demonstration, so he, he thought you could be myself, but you're not, um, because maybe of the year, I don't know, <laughs> um, and he's able now to, uh, to, to compute your face, and uh, next time you will present there, he should be able to recognize you, so uh, we, we, we'll play it again once, I'm waiting that he finishes, because um, so this is, you know, real machine learning, and uh, it would have been better if it was running on GPU. Um, this is what I heard, and, uh, and the algorithm runs better on GPUs than on CPU. Unfortunately, on a laptop, the GPU is not that open. It has to be an NVIDIA GPU that provides a, an API for it, so it takes maybe 10 times the time to compute the, uh, the image, and that is, this is why the tracking was not that um, uh, performant uh, at that moment, but this is really cool that that works anyway. So I think now if we, if you come back there and try to catch, he's there, he's the one to be seen. And if I do the recognize face, start classify face. Uh, and hi Francois Bonnet. Missed. <laughs> you have been recognized with a score of 86. <laughs> we are brothers, for instance. <laughs> uh, in fact, maybe, I don't know if the, uh, the, uh, the end of the learning process has been finished. We'll, we, we'll redo it again once. So if you want to be in front of the robot, please. Start classify face. Come on. And the answer is, move a little. We have Approach the robot now. You were smiling before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here it would be better. Start classify face. No, come on. You have been recognized with a score of 98. 98 for Bruce Silver. Hi, Bruce Silver. Thank you. You're still yourself, Bruce. Okay, so that was the. Uh, the active part of the, uh, of the demo. Now uh, I owe you a few explanations on how it works and what kind of magic. Uh, I went through the, uh, the voice, so I'm sorry for that. I have a few extra slides. I know it's not really in the rules, but uh, uh, this is a matter of explanation. And I will be short on this part. So uh, the idea is um, this is directly linked with uh, BPMN, and the implementation has been made that we have we made the choice because we are on the limits on how we, we should integrate and we wanted to make the difference between what is uh, synchronous. So for instance, I have a user task that is asked by the robot with the voice system and I have here a user task and the user task is synchronous but could be user task or could be the dense service for instance that it launches the video before it starts. Uh, and once the video is finished, then you can move to the next step. But there are also some asynchronous information where the uh, searching human is quite a long-term process that may uh, continue because you have the recognized face and capture face, which is interactive, that will stop the process there at that time. And um, we also have a loosely coupled integration with the, the processes what, that we can call, and this is in fact, this is not an open pattern. The sub-process in BPMN is not open, so you have to think about the way you could do that. So send a signal with the name of the process in it, and you can trigger whatever process you want. And then you have other fixed, fixed information. Then we have uh, every, every demonstration we had earlier had pieces of code, so I wanted to add one as well. So I just added that what is uh, interesting, for instance, is that the name of the service is the dense service that has been implemented by the developer, and the dense service is uh, something that you have with the MP3 file and the start date and the end date of the, uh, um, of, the, of the video that you want to make sure that you are able to. And this is a part of information that we have available within one of the tasks. Um, let's finish with what we have there. 
Uh, there, this is the, uh, the voice system. In fact, this is the basic um, uh, file structure you have when you want to make a voice with the um, dialog flow system. And the only thing that changes there is the name of the source where the agent can be different. And we, had, we added a BPMN agent that makes the link between the BPMN process that can ask a question, get the resolution, and interact directly there. So there are a few contact points there. Uh, so we, we saw that this is the macro steps that we had. So you better understand how it happened. So I entered the shop. I've been captured as a face. Then the face recognition coming in. And then I have also some integration with, with the plan warning that goes and look for the information in my recordings. Uh, I have the custom greetings. We could have entered the shop with someone unknown and we would have a standard uh, greeting, hey, welcome, because otherwise you would say, welcome, my client. And then we have this part where we're waiting for the answer. And then we had the different actions. And this one is the big one that we played, where depending on if you are recognized, then you go directly to the end to have the choice. Or we could have into a registration process when you give your name, your first name, last name. This is what we did with Bruce. And we stopped the process at that moment. And at the end, of course, you have the different uh, processing that has been proposed uh, to, to us. So this is the big phone shop, but we'll not go into details in it. And the uh, different integration point. Uh, so we talked about the recognition. This is where we have the opportunity to use the RPA technology to go against the different services that could be available into the back office. Uh, the capture of the document could be done with a system of signals as well, uh, as far as uh, BPMN is concerned. Uh, we've seen the customer environment, the way you go enter your uh, ID or you enter your name, first name. But you could have done that with, uh, we capture a document that could uh, propose this information. And then um, the, uh, the face tracking and face recognition and registration is based on artificial intelligence there dedicated to the document as well. And then we had the KYC, the moment you want to check the, uh, uh, the, the, content, the content of the, uh, uh, of the document to make sure that the customer you have in front of you is there. So these were the, the basic um, the, the basic moments we have into the, uh, into the demonstration. Uh, I'm wondering how much time left I have. Two minutes. Two minutes for the questions. Yeah. So, okay, let's go for the questions. Any question? Oh, no, it's just PowerPoint boundaries I have there. <laughs> the facial recognition is an external service? Yes, it's based on TensorFlow. So these are, you know, there are so many APIs, it's difficult to connect, uh, to, to know everything. But uh, we didn't, we, we are specialists of document recognition, not face recognition. And maybe this is where they are the most uh, sophisticated algorithms that do exist there. But, but, our, the, but the face striking, has been developed by the developer. Okay. There is now an emerging area of sentiment analysis based on facial recognition. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the idea of uh, being able to have pluggability of those specialized services that uh, would be outside of the expertise of, of either the robot manufacturer mm -hmm. or the... Or the software the vendor at that right. moment, yeah. And this is why we, we, we wanted to show that it's possible to had some external services that bring in some information that push and drive the way the business process is, is uh, exposed and, and, uh, and conducted to the, uh, to the next processing step. Okay? Thank you very much. <laughs>